Is this the roadmap I have to travel to become a full stack developer? Front end, scrolling, back end, scrolling, and DevOps scrolling. As I'm looking at this roadmap, my entire being vanished from this reality. Suddenly, I see lots of stars in my mind eyes. That is the entire galaxy. I realize. Each star represents a skill I have to master to become a full stack developer. But wait a minute, I'm already a senior full stack developer. Oh, now I realize my intuition is trying to tell me that I need to help you to navigate through this roadmap to the source of everything, so that you can master the most important parts, and from there. You master everything else. Back to reality. My name is Frank Liu. I'm a senior full stack developer. Welcome to my channel. That was a intimidating road trip to travel to become a full stack developer, but it was a fun trip to the center of the galaxy. Today, in this video, I'm going to show you a simplified roadmap that you can travel to become a solid full stack developer fast. I welcome you to travel with me. On another road trip, along with the information that goes between the browser and the server, back and forth, and along the way, we're gonna see all of the technologies that are involved, and we'll see what the simplified roadmap is going to be. Let's get started. If you think about any web page that you browse every day, for example, this one, the look and feel is determined by the CSS. It is like a skin of your body that provides the look and feel. And the HTML is like the skeleton that provides the structure, and also contains the content. In the JavaScript or WebAssembly, it provides the functionality. It contains the logic, and enables the user to dynamically interact with the page. And the information goes through the page, and being encapsulated in an HTTP request, going through the TCP and IP protocol. And turn into either electronic signals or energy waves traveling in the air, and then there are switches in between the internet, route your request to the correct place、uh, on the server side. Of course, it's going to reverse the process from IP to TCP to HTTPS, and then the the application framework on the server side it will interpret the HTTP request, and the information goes to. The central place where you write your application and business logic, with the language of your choice. I'm using C Sharp as example, and then it will contact the database or data store, whatever the data store is. I'm using database as example. So this, the connection can be guarded by SSL or TLS to enforce the security. And these highlighted nodes here are the essential. Technology that you need to get familiar with. So let's focus on C Sharp or the language of your choice. Again, I'm using C Sharp as an example, right? We're gonna learn this first, and then we're gonna learn data store. We don't have to learn database first because it's very it's a vast topic.、Uh, so we can replace that with、uh, file system first, right? And then we're gonna we are not gonna learn the whole front end, including the、uh, application framework. Right after the file system, what we can do is we can replace that, right? We can find a substitute technology to work on, so that we can train ourselves fast. I suggest you work with Windows Forms because it's event driven. It's very similar to JavaScript. With these three technologies, you now actually a full stack developer, quote unquote. Except that you know the database you are using file system and the front end you are. Uh, substituting it with、uh, with a Windows Forms app, right? And after that, you can replace the file system with database. You replace Windows apps, and you try to learn the application framework, and as well as everything else. So stay tuned because after the commercial break, I'm going to break this down in detail and starting from the very beginning. All right, first I suggest you to learn the Language itself. I'm using C sharp, right? Learn C sharp yourself. Learn the variables, flow control statements, arrays, functions, methods, 
and practice all of that with console applications, right? Because the simplest application you can create. At the same time, you're gonna learn some basic operating system theory. You don't have to go too deep, but at least you know how your program, the apps that you're creating are loaded into memory and run inside your computer. And after that, uh, you're gonna learn the file system. You're gonna learn how to create a file, read a file, update, right? how to search the directories and so on and so forth. There's not so much you have to learn. Uh, everything is in .NET framework and it doesn't take too long to to understand and be able to start writing applications, right? At this moment, you can create your console applications and, and to talk to the file system system and your users will be able to interact with console applications and the data can be saved. So after that, you can start creating Windows Forms applications. It doesn't take too much time to learn. So you can just start creating with some help from uh, different resources on YouTube or, or even Microsoft documentations. The Windows Forms provides you with a graphical user interface instead of just the console app, right? And allowing users to interact with the system. So this is very similar to the web application front end, right? So at this moment, you can practice everything that is interacting with the user, right? And you can recreate all of the apps that you have created by replacing that part with the Windows Forms. And so at this moment, you can, you're actually creating a full application, right? My career start, started with a Windows app, well actually Windows CE app that runs on PDA. That was about, uh, that was actually 20 years ago before smartphone. And uh, we were creating GPS uh, navigation systems on PDA and uh, the company sold millions of PDAs uh, with the application equipped. And uh, it was a very good run until smartphone came out with free maps on it. The company vanished. After that, you learn some use case analysis. This is very essential for you, for you to, uh, if you go, go to smaller companies or you start freelancing, you need to understand use cases. You need to understand the requirements from your clients. And uh, this is the first step to turn requirements into code. Afterwards, you need to learn object-oriented programming and some simple data structures, right? You need to learn encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism. Uh, you learn list, hash tables, and dictionary, and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, the data structures are already inside .NET framework, so it's there very easy to After that, uh, because you have just learned object-oriented programming, so can you learn something uh, some software design and architecture that is related or unrelated to object-oriented programming. And uh, there are some um, some good enterprise architecture you can follow, some patterns you can follow, some principles you can follow. So this actually provides you know proper architecture and, and helps you to avoid spaghetti code and tight coupling design. And uh, with that knowledge, go back and improve the Windows Forms application that you created so that you're not just writing something that can work, but upheld the surface, right? And we see that structure is a mess. We should avoid that uh, by applying the knowledge that you have just learned and uh, improving your Windows Forms applications. And after that, uh, you're gonna learn database. I would suggest you learn the uh, SQL Server, uh, SQL Server Developers Edition is uh, it's free. So you learn this and then afterwards, you can go and learn NoSQL. The design is totally different, but I would suggest you uh, do this first because 99% of the business out there is still, enterprise business still requires you to, to use a relational database instead of a non-relational database, right? So you're going to learn SQL queries, you're going to learn database designs, start procedures, functions, uh, ADO.NET, some macro ORM. Don't learn the full entity framework uh, just yet, because you're going to be overwhelmed by it. Uh, you just learn, you can just start with macro OM like a dapper, right? And then uh, after that, you're, you can replace the file system with the database, right? We could, with, with the architecture that you have learned, the patterns you have learned, you can actually uh, design the file system as uh, a data store plugin. So instead of file system, you can use the database data store plugin. So, so that's a very seamless substitution. So after that, um, you should learn some basic networking knowledge, right? Like uh, some basic HTTP, TCP, IP, DNS, SSL, TLS, 
and uh, you can create apps. Um, I would suggest you to create apps listening to HTTP requests. Uh, and this can be a console application that listens to HTTP requests and interpret it and process it and return some very uh, basic HTML. Right, you gotta learn a little bit HTML here, very easy to learn. So after that, you're ready to learn application frameworks. Uh, and if you are on Microsoft platform, then it's ASP.NET Core. It's based on uh, console applications and you just need to learn how to configure the framework and how to hook up to your uh, core layers, which is your, your C-sharp codes, right? Your core application and business logic layers. And, uh, and then you learn a little bit uh, HTML and CSS, and you can start creating web applications at this, at this moment. And, uh, and, and then you go and replace the Windows Forms with the web applications that, that you learn how to create, right? And re you redo all of your previous applications and replace the UI layer. Create new, new applications. Now you're actually officially a web developer. And after that, you learn some basic JavaScript and front-end framework of your choice. Uh, if you use C-sharp, uh, JavaScript is going to be easy for you because the syntax is uh, very similar. If you use Java, the syntax is going to be very similar too. And if you were to learn front-end framework, I would suggest you to start with Vue.js because it's a very easy uh, framework to start with. The learning curve is not that steep. Start with Vue.js and then you will understand how the front-end framework works and uh, you can choose to learn something else like Angular, React, so on and so forth. And congratulations, you're now a full stack developer. But keep learning and keep working, never stop. So let me clarify some points here and show the reason why I want to follow this approach. As you have noticed, I I'm not starting from the front end, I'm starting from the back end. And the reason why is uh, if you follow it from like following this, uh, the dotted line, and once you go past, once you go past here, right, staying here, like I said, you can already start looking for a job. Won't be a lot of opportunity nowadays with Windows Forms, but you can even start learning WPF, right? And so instead of using WinForms, you can learn WPF or Xamarin Forms for mobile applications. And uh, and Microsoft is uh, is replacing Xamarin Forms, so follow that. And uh, it's not going to be very difficult for you to learn at that point. So you can you, you can choose to 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 even start looking for a job and working on projects and making a little bit of money. Right, and once you finish the database part, right now you have more choice. You can uh, continue with your work, right? As you're working, you can learn the database part, and then the company is gonna give you more projects to work work on, and uh, you can even choose to become a database developer because this is a huge topic. Uh, but you don't have to go that deep in order to work on projects. But if you're going deep and you understand more and more, you can even choose to become just a database project, right? You can even learn to learn to design data warehouses and uh, uh, learn the uh, ETL processes and uh, data data factory uh, pipelines, so on and so forth, right? It becomes a you can focus on data. So, but if you can still want to be a full full stack developer. Then you know once you are once you are here, you have different type of application framework to to uh, to learn, right? Uh, within the ASP.NET Core, you can you can use Razor Pages, you can use MVC. Uh, if you use MVC, then you can MVC is going to be really similar to Web APIs, which is a very important uh, technology that you need to learn uh, in order to become a full stack developer. Right, and also there's another uh, technology which is called uh, Blazor. Right, Blazor uh, with Blazor you don't even need to learn too much JavaScript. Just a little bit of JavaScript is enough. Blazor will be the very fast approach for you, uh, uh, application framework for you to learn to become a uh, full stack developer. I actually have a course that teaches Blazor 
framework with clean architecture, but that's more for intermediate level. So you really have to learn C Sharp already in order to take that. You're gonna find the link to the course either in the description area or up in the uh, in the card, right? There's also something I want to talk to you. So let's go up to here. So in terms of uh, the changes, so as a full stack developer, you need to be prepared to deal with fast changes. So the the thing at the back end don't change that much, right? So uh, database doesn't change that much. Uh, C sharp or the language that you choose from will probably change every few years. Not not few, not actually changing, but adding additional uh, features to it. You don't have to use the new features, but you're recommended to to know at least what the new features are, right? The application framework probably gonna change uh, constantly, but you know it's it's gonna be still slower than JavaScript, right? These things almost never change. So you learn just a little bit and you're good. And the JavaScript will be really, really it's it changes really, really fast. WebAssembly, if you learn that, uh, you know, Blazor, WebAssembly, and uh, nowadays WebAssembly is supported by all major browsers. So I'm foreseeing other languages will also have something like Blazor that supports um, you to create applications without using JavaScript. But if you choose to use JavaScript, you have to know that JavaScript actually changes a lot. It changes every year and uh, sometimes even faster, the frame, the friend and frameworks, frameworks changes really, really fast. And sometimes they're breaking changes. So uh, HTML and CSS doesn't change that much. Uh, the, you have, you can also choose to learn some CSS frameworks like um, Bootstrap, uh, Boma, uh, and those are pretty easy to learn, right? Of course, uh, another thing I want to make a point, of course, from the the roadmap that you saw at the beginning of this video is uh, there are lots of, each one of these will, will explode uh, and grow exponentially. But if you focus on these, you will learn to create projects and while you're focusing on these main nodes, right, these main technologies, you're gonna learn those little things on the way. So my intention for future video tutorials is to follow this roadmap that I have presented. Although I'm currently working on some other series. So that's the end of this video. And if you like my video, uh, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so that you don't miss any of my videos and leave some comments if you think this this roadmap is helpful. Feedback as well. If you think it's not helpful in problems, then I can improve. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.